Inmate Jeffrey Epstein is now best known as a predator and convicted criminal, but before he was outed as a monster, he used his mega millions to buy mansions all over. And he didn't stop there. Jeffrey went all out buying his own island, now dubbed Pedophile Island, and it's actually a tourist attraction in the Caribbean these days. This private island has gained worldwide media attention for its troubling ties to the sexual abuse allegations against him. In fact, it was this residence where Epstein had trafficked underage girls to the island for inappropriate acts, and up until his arrest in July of 2019, this was considered his primary residence. Jeffrey had purchased Little St. James, which was a roughly 75-acre private island in the Virgin Islands in 1998 for $7.95 million, and his property grew. In fact, by 2008, Epstein has built a five-building compound and even had a staff of 70. Today, we're checking out this creepy island. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer, and today we're bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. If you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. We post a new video daily. While we already looked at the homes of the disturbing Jeffrey Epstein, today we're focusing just on his private island, which is just as creepy as his home. As you know, here we talk about celebrity houses, but have you ever wondered about Justin Bieber's new whip or the outfits on the hottest celebrities right now like Elizabeth Olsen? We recently started a brand new channel, Famous Fashion, where myself and some other hosts are reporting on all things celebrity fashion and purchases. Join us and subscribe. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat, and now let's get into this video. Now convicted sex offender, Jeffrey was accused of trafficking underage girls to the island as you probably know. Up until his arrest in July 2019, the private island was considered his primary residence. The property, which has since been dubbed File Island by locals, gained worldwide media attention for its troubling ties to the disturbing allegations against him. Now, while locals admit it's messed up, they're curious to see where the evil Epstein lived as there's been an uptick in nosy visitors sailing by the island. But honestly, since we're reporting on it, it's safe to say everyone gets a little bit curious for the dark things sometimes. Jeffrey Epstein purchased Little St. James, a roughly 78-acre private island in the Virgin Islands in 1998 for $7.95 million. The island included five buildings and at one point a staff of a whopping 70 people. Placing one flag on each end of the island, the five buildings on the island were as follows. A villa style compound, a library, a cinema, a detached bathhouse, and additional cabanas. In addition, there was even a flamingo stacked lagoon. A lot like his New York City mansion, this place was decked out with a bunch of bizarre stuff. One of these odd features included an abundance of life-size plastic cows. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't see that one coming. Epstein's fascination with animal decor didn't end with plastic cows. In addition, there were two parrot statues next to stairs that lead down to the beach. Close to the beach, Epstein's property also boasted a large solar clock or sundial, which was just steps away from the ocean. What's even stranger about the sundial is that it features a circle of colorful benches surrounding the painting of a sun. Throughout the home, there were odd looking pieces of furniture, including one that was an armchair appearing to be made of animal horns and hide. It doesn't even look comfortable to sit in. It appears Epstein had an eclectic taste in art, revealing odd statues of apes, gargoyle-like sculptures, and more. The island also had featured what can be best described as a temple structure that boasted some more strange features. Now, the purpose of that temple remains unclear, but there are a lot of conspiracy theories about that room was used for. Some say it was most likely used as a music room for Epstein to play piano, read books, or work. However, one of the features of this blue strip temple is a door that appears to be designed to keep people inside. What's odd about the entrance is that the door and its surrounding wall was painted as if to give the illusion of dimension. And it's actually a relatively cheap temple for a billionaire and could be built for $5,000. In addition, the island featured a secluded house with the windows hidden from view and a particularly dark entryway. You can go ahead and add this to the list of creepy buildings throughout the island. Sounds haunted to me. The main residence and compound sit on the northeast point of the island, and a pair of guest houses sit on the northwest and southeast points of the island. A cream-colored mansion with a turquoise roof can be seen from the water, and it's surrounded by a variety of structures, including what was reportedly the maid's quarters. 
Some more creepy old photos surfaced taken on Epstein's island while he lived here, including one in which he chats on the phone while getting a massage from who appears to be his former assistant Sarah. Some of these snaps feature more intimate peeks into the luxury digs, including a white drenched bedroom with a full and twin bed. Other photos show views to the palm tree laden private island and feature beautiful young women posing for the camera. As I mentioned, it only took Epstein five months after getting out of jail before his company filed a new permit application seeking to further expand his property on Little St. James. His plans included the construction of a 2,400 square foot wood sun deck with coral stone paving in his organic vegetable garden, and a stone patio and sitting area perched on the top of the island for observing sunsets and overlooking the sea. He also requested permission to build a 10,400 square foot pool pavilion, a 1,320 square foot ATV garage made out of stone, and a tennis court built in a lowland area to ward off high winds. Along with Little St. James, Epstein also owns the private island next to it, Great St. James. This second island spans 165 acres and was purchased by Epstein in 2016 for a reported $18 million. Another scary fact about this island is that some of Epstein's victims claim they were held hostage here, which isn't surprising. They say their passports were stolen and even trying to swim off the island was impossible. One victim says she attempted this and was caught and brought back. Since the took place on the isolated island, the only means of escape was by a helicopter or boat, a luxury none of these girls had. Today, the property still features all of Epstein's empty office buildings, dumpsters, park tractors, and even an ambulance. And while from the outside it might look like paradise, perfectly manicured beaches lined with palm trees, two pools and lined with turquoise waters, it's not. Today the property has become a huge tourist attraction and even made an appearance on Netflix Filthy Rich. Alright so I think I'll bring this Jeffrey Epstein Island tour to an end right there. And while the island looks picture perfect from an outsider's view, once you know what really went down here, it makes the place more of a nightmare. Little St. James will likely always be known as a disturbing property. What did you guys think about the former Epstein Island? What was the creepiest or weirdest thing about it? I mean aside from his decorating taste which made it all seem like a cult or something along those lines, the fact that there was no way to escape on your own was pretty scary. I couldn't imagine what those girls were thinking. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. On a lighter note, for some content that might cheer you up, go ahead and like and subscribe to my personal channel and I'll link you guys one of my latest videos. Caitlin's basically gonna get me playing Fortnite, which I've never played. It's probably gonna be super embarrassing. I'm likely behind you though. Someone was shooting from behind. No, oh, you know what? That's all he's gonna kill you now. But that, it's not even an actual person. It's like a. What is that? It's a bot, so you can go talk to them and like get a bounty. Yeah, they go, now they're, they're killing me. Should I just run? Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and tell me whose house tours you guys wanna see next. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.